Welcome to CivilNet. I'm here today with my colleagues, Maria Titizian and Sarah Anjar Golian. And we're going to be talking about the Al Jazeera campaign to reach global solidarity in support of their journalists who are still incarcerated and on trial in Egypt. There's a simple word to describe this global day of action, huge. At the beginning of Thursday, we were looking at events happening in 40 locations right around the world, all to highlight the need for media freedom. But the online reaction to that was astonishing. This is how the hashtag free AJ stuff went viral. And we're going to talk about our part in it, pat ourselves on the back a little bit, and also talk about why this is important. Um, Maria, Sarah, thanks. Um, Maria, first tell me and tell our listeners how we got ourselves into this great situation, and then we'll talk about impact, especially since all of it really and I want to say this so it doesn't sound like we're just patting ourselves on the back, since I really think it ties into what we at CivilNet say we want to do, and that has become a part of the global conversation. So how do we get ourselves into this? Well, somebody had you know, posted that Al Jazeera had decided to do a global day of action after the trial that took place in Cairo, which was postponed until March 5. Um, and then, of course, I've been following what's been going on on Twitter, and one person says something else, and then we start to think that, oh, well, why don't we become part of this conversation? Because, you know, we all have our own personal narratives and our own personal experiences, and I had gone to a point where I was really tired of hearing myself speak, and hearing you speak, and hearing Sarah speak, and hearing, <laughs> you know, the president of Armenia speak. I'm really tired of hearing our own voices and our own problems. In our own small circle of issues. Mm -hmm. Right, insularized, uh, you know, beating our chest, vai vai, vui vui, you know. And again, it comes, there's a long history behind it, which, you know, we can talk about another day. So I thought, well, you know, here we have a group of really uh, talented, young, active, progressive staff, journalists, and we could be, and we're multilingual. I mean, it just, for mm -hmm. me, it, it was power and strength that we forget that we have. And, and the lines that you chose, mm -hmm. well, I have to say, I saw this on air. I mean, I, and so the lines that you chose mm -hmm. weren't defensive, weren't uh, specific to this case and this crime. It's about the fact that as a journalist, regardless of where I work and who I work for and what organization I work for, whether it's Al Jazeera or CNN or Fox, God forbid, or, or you know, or CivilNet in this case, I have my own integrity and my own idea of what, I mean, it is the public's right to know. I am the vehicle through which the public needs mm -hmm. to know. Um, nobody can trample on that right as a journalist. Uh, and, and that's where it came from. And so, you know, I had put together, you know, the way we work here in our docs, you know, with the title and the description and, and what I wanted to say. And Sarah, we, Sarah and I share an office, as you know. So <laughs> I send the, the doc over, I share it with Sarah, and I go, look, this is what I, we're thinking of doing this. This is what we have, and I, you know, I tend to be verbose. So Sarah then took it and then just you know, knocked it down into... Mm -hmm. Sarah, the former attorney. Right, right. Exactly. Exactly. You turned photojournalist, and you have to choose you know, seven <laughs> pictures from 200. That's right. That's, t t yeah. Continue this. Talk about this process that we talk about, huh, as diasporans in Armenia as well, that this need to become a mm -hmm. part of the global conversation. Sure. Actually, I remember after I asked permission from Maria if I could, uh, you know, sort of sink my teeth into this text, the one line that I inserted over and over again uh, in this piece is um, the, what every single person in this piece and the whole network of journalists have in common, which is we are journalists. And I think that is really what um, sort of catapulted our piece in t onto the global stage because it really resonated with the millions of other journalists around the world who, regardless of you know, what their last name may sound like or uh, what language they may speak, we all have in common you know, this one passion, the passionate part of us that goes to work every day and does this type of work, regardless of how painful it is. Let's, let's use this opportunity to pat ourselves on the back a little bit. Al Jazeera, all day yesterday, Al Jazeera English, uh, had taken photos, statements from journalists and others all around the world, and yet ours made it in frequently, became the closing piece, um, obviously because the message was bigger than just, you know, get those poor guys out of there. It was bigger. So what's our lesson? What's the lesson learned for civil net, for the Armenian world? What's the lesson learned? Uh, okay. Outside uh, in? Outside, outside in. Outside in. Outside in. Yeah. Um, you know, 
<sighs> Sapi, you've always said that sometimes to change things inside, we have to go mm -hmm. outside and from the outside come back inside. And, and, and that's what we have been failing to do, I think, for decades, if not for centuries. Mm -hmm. um, if you read a, a speech by a political leader 100 years ago, 150 years ago, if you read the literature and the poetry that was written during the Armenian Renaissance in the 18th, 19th century, early 20th century, it's like nothing has changed. Mm -hmm. It's like nothing. I, I could take a speech written by, I don't know, like I was saying earlier, Mikhail Varantian, who took part in the first Socialist International, mm -hmm. and go to a, to a meeting of global leaders, and I could read the same text and just change the dates, mm -hmm. and it would be the exact same thing. It's about survival and preservation and identity. But we talk to ourselves. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, but we don't talk, yeah. And, and when we do go to those global forums, what do we talk about? We talk about mm -hmm. Armenian statehood, sovereignty, genocide. Mm -hmm. Instead of all of the issues that, that you, Sarah, specifically, and other activists in Armenia, from mm -hmm. Armenia, from diaspora, and so forth, all of the the internal issues that we raise, mm -hmm. they're really the same as global issues, Absolutely. aren't they? Just the other day I had a Skype call with a woman in Odessa in the Ukraine, and she, you know, she's You're not, responsible? What's that? You're responsible? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, no, I mean, it was, it was amazing, actually, because, you know, at first, you, you know, you, you come to these conversations with all your baggage thinking, you know, what would I possibly have in common with a woman sitting in Odessa? I had to, you know, even figure out what part of the Ukraine Odessa was in. And once we started talking about the issues that they've been dealing with and they're, uh, you know, um, trying to unshackle themselves from their history, I, I, f I felt so emotional in that conversation that I ended up uh, writing an email to her later on, a very emotional email saying, you know I, know, I know we don't know each other, but I really feel like we are walking in the same shoes right now. Your frustrations of not being able, you know, to, to deal with your government are so much like mine. And um, I, f I felt very much like we were on the same continuum. Just to continue yeah. Sarah's thought, just one more example. Uh, I was in South America last year. I went to Uruguay, Argentina, and Brazil. I met with women's organizations, Armenian women's organizations, but also political mm -hmm. organizations, you know, women's caucuses that they have in Uruguay. Mm -hmm. I met with NGOs in Argentina, and, you know, they want to know about the women's situation in Armenia. And I'm talking, and they're all smiling and shaking their heads, mm -hmm. smiling and shaking their heads. I'm thinking, uh, is the translation off, or what is the problem? And they said, all you needed to do was take Armenia out of your, your words and, and insert Argentina, or insert Uruguay mm -hmm. or insert Brazil, and it's the exact same story here. Mm -hmm. And we forget that. So that's that's right. what we're talking about. Because we're so focused on our problems that we've, we're kind of myopic, thinking that we're the only ones dealing with these things, and woe is us. But, you know. It's social justice, yeah. it's environment, that's right. it's poverty reduction, mm -hmm. it's responsible government, it's women's and children's rights. Mm -hmm. I mean, which one of those are not Armenian issues? Mm -hmm. And which one of those are not global issues? Los Angeles issues. Mm -hmm. We're not just talking third world. That's right. We're talking world, right? Mm -hmm. So this is, as much as we think we understand that, this was a lesson learned, I think, for us. And, mm -hmm. and by this conversation, I hope the, you know, the rest of you out there who clearly have active interests in Armenian community issues or Armenian issues, or you wouldn't be sitting here watching us, that this was a lesson learned. We can be uh, an effective part of the global mm -hmm. conversation. Absolutely. A lesson learned for February 2014. Stay tuned. Thank you for following us on CivilNet. I've been talking to Maria Titizian and Sarah Anjargolian, my colleagues here at CivilNet, uh, about the very good work we did uh, this week by uh, supporting the issues of uh, the rights of journalists, Al Jazeera journalists in this case, uh, on trial in Egypt and becoming a part of the global conversation. It's important to remember this movement goes beyond our own stuff. It's about media freedom everywhere. A sentiment perhaps best illustrated in this video from Civil Net, a group of Armenian journalists. It has one central theme, which the Global Day of Action was all about. Quite simply, I am a journalist. Le journalisme ne peut jamais être juge. Mais solidarité des journalistes et dans tout le monde, qui sont en tourmente et se battent pour leur liberté. Oui, c'est le droit.